fundamental to being able to properly administer SQL Server is understanding how the data is actually stored inside SQL Server. And so for the next few videos, I want to talk about, and this is key to this course, I want to talk about how SQL is storing the data and what you can do to help SQL become much more efficient at both writing and reading that data for you. Well, let's first of all, to help this make sense, let's go look at one of the tables. Remember the parts table from other places in the course. If I right click this parts table and modify it, I can actually see the data types and all the columns that are in that table. Okay, there's another way I can see those. If I expand the table and expand columns, you'll notice I can see there's integer, varchar 50, integer, integer, and so forth. If I take these data types, and if you remember from the video on data types, I know how many bytes each one of these takes up. So if this is 4 bytes, and this is 50, that's 54, and this is 4, that's 58, and that's 4, that's uh, uh, 62, and so forth, I can add up the number of bytes that a particular row is going to consume in memory. So that becomes my row size. This is a little easier to see. If I right-click parts and say open table, you can now see that that is a complete row. So let's say that this row takes 2,000 uh, bytes of memory. Okay. Now, to make this a little clearer, let's go out and look at a diagram. First of all, that page that I mentioned, that is the basis for storage in SQL Server. And so all of our rows are written on the page, and the page is 8,192 bytes, or 8K. Now, you don't get the entire 8,192 bytes, because a little of it's taken for housekeeping. You get around 8,060 bytes. But notice, you have one row can fill up an entire page. Generally, rows don't cross pages. We won't get into that. But for the most part, understand that one row can fill up an entire page, which means one row can be roughly 8,000 bytes long. Well, SQL then goes the next step, and it groups every one of the pages into groups of eight. And this is known as an extent. So you have eight 8K pages, and that's 64K. Now, what's significant about that? Well, when Windows, by default, reads data from a disk or does data input-output, it does it in 64K chunks, which means when the Windows operating system attempts to read from the disk, it grabs 64K, which means it's grabbing a complete extent of data. So it behooves us to pack our extents as tightly as possible. We get more efficient reads. Now, here's the best way to think about this. And I'm just going to write over this, and it's kind of primitive looking, but hang in there with me. If I build a row that is a little over 4,000 bytes, then that means I can only get one row per extent, right? And so if I start to fill up my extents, okay, let's say I've got nine rows of data that I need to pull that I'm trying to select, then that means I need one more extent out here, which is a whole new extent that I have to pull. It's a new read. So I have to do one read on this extent and another read to get this extent, right? So two reads to get this data. Now, what would happen if instead of letting this data grow to just over uh, 4,000, I pulled it just under 4,000, and I can get two reads or two rows to every extent? Now, you notice what's happening. I'm packing the data twice as dense in my data pages, which means that as SQL reads, every time it grabs a 64K chunk, it now read 16 rows of data. So it's getting data really twice as efficiently. Now, sometimes you can manipulate this. Sometimes you can't. You just need to know what size your rows are and play with it. Now, there is a way to see this, and I'll show it to you a little bit later on. Now, one other, the next level on this becomes how these extents are managed in memory. Now, let's say I've got a certain number of rows, and the rows are in a certain order. Well, my extents are in order. When the databases, especially indexes, are first rebuilt, everybody's put back into order, and this is very similar to defragging your hard disk. And you'll note that the extants are in a certain order. And when they're in this order, okay, which means this is row 1, this is row 2, row 3, row 4, assuming these take up the entire page, you can see to read this and report it back to the user would be very easy because they're going to come in order, right? No problem. Well, when these things start to get out of order, that's defragmentation. And I'll talk about in some upcoming videos how to deal with that. So that's the first step. If you can get this image, you can start to see how SQL is storing the data and some little things that you can do to make it more efficient.